now that we have created our server, we also need to link it to our app. Currently, we don't have any identification of which user we are chatting with. This is something that we have added as a static uh, sort of title. So in order to actually make it dynamic, we have to pass uh, the name of the user over here as a parameter. You can basically just go to routing and in here we can say slash colon user id and this will create a parameter that we can pass from our home page so if we go to home page we can say slash user dot name or rather contact dot name so we click on joe we can see that Joe is now added over here but we also need to access these parameters from the other page so let's go to chat page dot page dot ps right here we need to have the route itself or the details of the route so for that we need to activate the route if we say route dot snapshot dot paramap dot get and we want to get the user id let's just console it for now So as we can see in the console, we have our uh, username or user id. So now that we are passing this over here, we also need to now have our socket initialized over here. So in order to do that, first of all we need to have the socket library in our application. So just like we had added that library in our backend server, so in index.html we had the script that was coming from the current server. We'll just copy this, we'll use this over here. So now in this case server that is serving this particular index.html is actually on a different port. So we also need to mention http colon double slash localhost colon 3000. So now it will fetch it from our backend server. Now in order to access this over here, if you just say io, it's not going to be able to recognize it. So I'm going to say npm install at the rate types slash socket dot not IO but IO client because this is a client not the server so now it's added in our package.json and it should be available in our node modules as well so as you can see it was showing an error before but now what we can do is we can have import star as IO socket dot IO client so now it's able to recognize it and it knows exactly what type of object this is so when we're creating this server or of this client trying to connect to this server, we have to again mention localhost 3000 and we can save this as a constant. So let's go ahead and do ionic surf and now if we click on Joe, we get this error. Now the reason we're getting this error is because in node we have a global object but in case of browsers we don't have a global object and instead we have a window object so in order to fix this error we have to go to polyfills.ts we need to add window as dot global is equal to window so we're basically saying that within window we want to add an object called global and this global is going to refer to window itself so let's go back so now that uh, this app has loaded we can click on this so it takes us to joe and if we check here it says joe but uh, more importantly if we go to our server we can see that it says a user has connected now i was using this before so i'm just going to clear this and do node index so again it says a user has connected let's refresh this and it says user disconnected and a user has connected again so now we have set up this integration between our client and our server so now let's go ahead and create a service for this so basically the service what it is going to do is it's going to connect to the server using io and it's also going to send the online event so let's go ahead and do that i'm going to switch to my console and after clearing this So I went ahead and entered my SRC app folder. I think it would be good if we create a folder called service. Here we are, service. And we go into the service folder. 
and we will create a new service ionic generate service let's just call it, call it socket service so it has generated our service let's go ahead and check if that is looking good so we've got a service folder and we have service.ts socket service.ts and so what we're going to do is we are going to put all of this code right here paste this here and also oops like this and paste it here but now the socket service has to be initialized beforehand so we're going to do that in app module itself if we go into app module or ts we can import the service service slash socket service socket service and so we can add socket service over here now we have socket service available in our app module in component we can simply just say private socket socket service instead of directly initializing this let's create socket here socket for now it's going to be any initialize this dot socket equals io and what does this return socket io client dot socket io client dot socket and so when we go ahead and import this or uh, fetch this socket service this is going to be socket dot initialize and that will initialize our socket for us now at this point what we're doing is basically we're doing the same thing but we're doing it a little bit differently so instead of initializing it directly we are initializing it through the socket service so now what we need to do is we also need to pass in the username that is going to be through the online event in homepage.html we will have an ion input a placeholder enter username if not username we are going to hide this or we are going to show this if there is username so if we go in here this is going to be a string we also need to give that person an option to store this so we're going to say ng model is equal to username uh, but this user, the username should be saved and only then we should be able to hide this so hide input and this is going to be boolean ion button and this button is going to be your submit button so let's call it submit Okay. Hide input field. and hide input field is going to be a function over here. Hide input field, hide input true. Now, if hide input is true, then we want to hide this. We want to show this if hide input is false and we want to show this if i need input is true and we have a submit button over here uh, we can type in our username so let's say joe and submit this and it gets hidden we also need to hide the button which i completely forgot now we also need to use this username over here to send the online event right so for now let's just see what happens joe submit and now we see our uh, list of contacts uh, in order to use this we need to call that event that we have created that you see here socket.emit online so and so so let's just copy this and inside of the service we will create a new method online and we're going to emit this event we're going to emit online but we don't have any jquery or anything like that over here so in online we can pass in the username and username so if you go to home page we need to create a new function set online say username in constructor we'll have private socket service and this is going to be socket dot online 
and we need to pass in the username so now in this what we want to pass is going to be the username so username so here as soon as we enter something and submit it will call hide input field hide input field will hide the input and it will call set online and pass in the username that we had entered and set online will call the online method of the socket service and this online method is basically going to uh, emit an event of online this is refreshed not entirely sure so let's open our inspector and submit so now we have a new user registered excellent